Welcome to B17 of Flying Fortress, the Mighty Ape, and this is the Redux version. Way back when I played this as the original version, and if uh, you're interested in getting into it, be careful. <laughs> it is very much a product of the 90s, that means you've got things like the quite kinetic menu system, and all the weird quirks that come with such old games. Now today we're going to go for Historical Mission, and talk a bit about how the Redux is doing really. So we're going to Bremen and we're going to bomb a Focke-Wulf factory. And first up, let's hop over to the Intel. All right, so we can see our target area flying past. We've got a nice big curved river to help cue us in. There's a triangle patch of ground. There's a bit like an arrow and then we've got the facility itself. So two blocks, lots of hangar shapes. That should be enough to queue us in on the target. There's also a railroad running past it. Again, that should all help us locate the target. Now, of course, we may or may not get to strike the target depending on the weather, but we'll hope for the best. So let's have a look. We can review our mission papers. And we have the primary target, it's the Fuck Wolf factory and that is everything we really need to worry about. The distance is 1,161 miles. Of course, we've got secondary targets, tertiary targets. So if the weather is bad, bad, we might choose to go to them instead. We've also got P-47s and P-38s to protect us. And of course, the threat is high across the board here. So we've got our secondaries and tertiary. Let's just skip on through those. And sign on the dotted line. Now this is probably where you're going to get stuck if you're not familiar with the old game, because the button to proceed is here. Or, there we go, here. That's a doorway, or it was in the old one. <laughs> They've covered it up with people now, so um, yeah, good job guys. You might want to reevaluate your artwork for that so people can find that button. So, as you can see, it is uh, old. The game itself was 23, 24 years old now. And they haven't redone the external graphics just yet. They do plan to, and you can have a look at what they'll hopefully look like in the future. But for now, let's just get started. So, clicking start time. And so, they're going to go through the sequence for me, and then we're going to hop inside. I'm going to press A for action. And this is where it lags, unfortunately. Every time you load a 3D asset for the first time, it lags a bit. And any second now, we're going to start up our first engine. Now, because this is an old game, you're going to have to deal with all the problems of the user interface. Come on, here we go. There goes our first engine. So if I hop back to the cabin, which can be done by using either this or I'm just going to press C, we're going to switch over to Tom and press I. And this is the old artwork, just widescreen, and if we start cycling through, we've got all these little views. Now one of my criticisms already is these views was blocked. The keybinds are double bound in the settings screen, so you can't access the intercorders for example, which is quite important because that can overheat your engine as engine 2 comes online now. Now one thing I've already noticed with this is if I hop back to the main view, these gauges don't work in the 3D view. I really hope they do something to address that in the future. In fact, it'd be great if they can add track IR support so you can actually fly from the cockpit, but hey. So the engine 3 is up, and we can hop through the rest of the cockpit, and so they've got all the nice modernized graphics. But again, these are still 2D images. And if I hop into a seat, we have new sights and views for inside. In fact, the problem with this gun sight right away is the top here is where you need to aim with because for whatever reason they didn't line the sights up properly. In fact they might have fixed it. Yes they have fixed it so that's good news. Last time I played this the sight was in the wrong position. So I'm glad they are for slowly getting through the problem so we just started taxiing now. Uh, let's hop into that window view. So we can see all the other B-17s from our squadron parked up waiting to go. So we're gonna head on over to the runway and start the mission. So a bit of a long one. Let's uh, hop over to the cabin, the nose, go to instruments, and instruments again. And uh, ignore the fidgeting B-17, it'll stop that once we're in the air. 
So let's zoom out and have a look at our mission. So we're going out northeast, all the way across the coast, and just like the original version, if you zoom out too far, it doesn't scroll. So I've got to zoom back in. So we're going to fly out to Bremen, got our targets here. So there's always a secondary, tertiary, and primary target, depending on the weather we may hit one or the other. And somewhere up here there should be... is this it? The decision point, so we'll fly out, get to here, get weather reports, and then decide which of these bomb runs we're going to do. Each of these rings represents a threat, so the blue ones, it's an airbase, airbase, and the thickness is how much of a threat they are. So in the case of the flak rings, we can see we've got quite a light flak battery here, with the small red, and then over Bremen itself we've got quite a thick boundary, indicating a much stronger battery of flak in the area. So, we just need to come with our mission now, really. It's a bit of a journey. And thankfully this game has something that many games that are going to support, uh, or want to support, big aircraft are going to need, and that's time skip. So let's get ourselves up in the air and I'll show you that in a minute. You are cleared for and we are up in the air. So the formation is going to uh, start orbiting around the airbase and then group up and we'll head on to target. There's the airbase in sight as we orbit around waiting for everyone to get into the air. So you can see now we've got the formation together, we're in the top bolt turret and looking out to the left there. So we've got everyone together so in a moment we should be sitting off on our mission. So I'm going to hop back to the navigation panel. Hit I and there we go, the navigator's given us our heading and we are on our way to target. So if I start hitting enter, oh, the navigator got lost. Okay, not the best navigator in our plane it turns out. But you can see we can jump across the, uh, the time and skip across and save ourselves the trouble of sitting there and waiting for it all to happen. Oh, our navigator is not very good, is he? Might turn the uh, difficulty tune that. Now, um, you might notice the colours. Green indicates we have enough fuel to make the journey. Orange is kind of uh, cutting it fine, and then this red is we have run out of fuel by this point. At the moment, our fuel consumption is a bit high because we are still climbing up to altitude. This will even out once we get there, but it helps you figure out whether or not you're going to make it to home or not. So, not cause for alarm just yet is it makes the assumption based on current position. Anyway, we're going to fast forward over, and uh, if my navigator was a bit smarter, we'd be able to jump forward about 10 minutes rather than uh, a minute. <laughs> so anyway, we're going to head over to the German coast. In fact, there we go, we've figured out where we are now. Must have cleared the clouds. So, we're almost there already, in fact. Here we go. So crossing over the German coast. Of course, once we begin to combat, and aircraft start, there we go, scrambling, we can't use the time compression quite so aggressively. I pop out, we can have a look on the side, and there's no aircraft nearby just yet. Oh look, there we go. So we got our B-17s, our P-38s, and our P-47s. Now if you played the original, you'd know you can control these. It doesn't work. They've disabled the feature for the time being, I guess, because they haven't done the uh, new copied artwork for them, which is disappointing. I'd be quite honestly happy just to do the old artwork. But uh, never mind. Once that's ready, we'll be able to control those and you'll actually be able to attack your own formation with the uh, German fighters if you're absolutely a masochist. But for now, we're just going to carry on, get to our target. So you can see the German coast running down here. We're just passing into the range now of the flak batteries that we saw on the map earlier. And up top of the devil, there you go. Quite light, like the uh, outline indicated. So this shouldn't be too bad. Now if we want, we can actually try and evade this flak, which uh, we might as well give a shot. So let's hop into the cabin view. Our navigator is lost again, good job. Unfortunately, he's not got much skill apparently. Let's go in, the crew do in fact rank up. So let's get the for formation to climb 1000 feet. And manual control. And hopefully that will get us clear of this flak and throw off the aim of those trying to attack us. In the meantime, I also want to get the weather report.
Five tenths, that sounds fine to me, so we're going to go for the primary target because we can get the other reports and also switch to secondary or tertiary if we feel the need to, or of course abort our mission. And this is kind of a big part of the game, so you've got all the crew to manage, in fact we've had a hit from the looks of it there in the cabin. So yeah, well, you can see the uh, damage there, so there was briefly a ghost icon on the crew, they were indicating they've been scared and they might have been injured, but they won't tell us until they go down from injury unfortunately. But this is a big part of how the game worked, is you're managing these ten chaps on the mission and in each individual compartment now and you can give them all the different orders to move around, first aid, repairs, etc. And uh, this is also another one of the problems with this game is there is a lot of advanced features. If I jump into here and go down to the uh, instrument panel here, we've got the fuel tanks. You can see they're all even. If one of these were to start leaking, however, which might happen on this mission, depending on how lucky we are. And the navigator lost again. Well done. But if you want to uh, transmit fuel from one side to the other, we can click on this guy here. This is our top turret engineer. But you can see he's not exactly visible. And I'm going to press I. Now this brings us to the ammunition counter for his turret. And now if I press spacebar, you see menus within menus here. Now we can select which tank we want to transfer. So the left tank 1 and 2. And then the... Oops. Back to 0. Oh, and uh, then we have engines 3 and 4 here. Which we then grab this lever to transfer the tank. So if we want to transfer from the from one tank on this wing, it doesn't mean to another tank on this wing. It doesn't mean we've got to transfer all the way across to this wing, and then back in again to this wing. So it's a bit of a, a faff. But if you lose an engine or an engine is leaking fuel, it means you can transfer the fuel where you need it. For example, if the fuel leak's not bad, you might want to just choose to sacrifice the fuel to keep the engine running, especially if you've already lost one. Anyway, it looks like the flag has stopped. A nice clear view in front of us. But uh, what I can see is cloud. So I hope things get better by the target. And you can see actually we've got a little bit of frame rate there, which is disappointing. And I've noticed this in general. So uh, yeah, guys, you need to fix that. Not something you'd expect from a 23 year old game running on a modern PC. Anyway, we're going to push on to target through the flak. Here we go then, we're starting the bomb run, we're turning into target, and you can see the bomb bay doors opening there and the bomber next to us. Our bomb doors have opened. So sink the turret, better see. As you do get better visibility by looking at the side versus the front, which blocks up a lot of your view. So, we begin our bomb run. Everybody hopefully will stay in formation. The game is, um, should we say, notorious for air-to-air -air collisions. The AI aircraft is not that smart. In fact, it's so prolific I tend to turn the collisions off and I recommend if you play you do the same thing. Because you'll get aircraft attacking you, flying into you, or your own formation will fly into itself and it's an absolute catastrophe. As you see the holes in the aircraft here, this was quite an uh, impressive bit of tech back in the day, where you got the holes drawn in dynamically on the aircraft. You can see we took a hit near the window earlier in the cockpit and you can see the bits of green where the metalwork has been flaked off by the impact. And uh, top of the devil, there is more flak and this, this is a lot thicker. But we can't manoeuvre now because we're on the bomb run, so uh, let's get in there and have a look. Jump to the front. Yeah, I don't think you should be stretching buddy, we're on the run, come on. Alright, so I can control this manually as you can many other stations. In fact, very quickly I'll jump in here. So the navigator can't see where we're going. This is sight, it's for setting the drift, and he's, um, you're supposed to line those lines up with the direction of travel, so I don't know what my navigator's doing. No wonder he's lost. But we're on the bomb run, we are in the right area. Um, just got to find our target. That's a good looking area for target, but I don't think that's our target. That may be one of the secondary. So let's take control. Start aiming the sight around, try to figure out where enough we are. So we got a curved river there, and one over there, and a curve there. Now that's too urban to be our target. This curve here, there's the triangle, you see that there? That should be as the triangle for us, I noted. Is that a rail yard there? It's a bit hard to tell just yet. Unfortunately, this is one of the things that Redux really needs to help with. They could do increase in the draw distance. 
and uh, the detail for that matter, because the 3D buildings on my target are those they're going to be here, I reckon. All we see right now are black blotches that come underneath the target. The 3D model hasn't loaded in yet, so I think that's our target. I think that's the rail yard running across. That's the triangle field I noted, and of course there's the turn in the river. So I'm going to lock the site, and now I need to start dealing with the drift. We're drifting off to the right, so I need to steer it to the left. And I'm using the joystick to do this. You can see on the right we've got the sliders adjusting, so I increase this up. You can see my sight start to slip to the up direction. Our goal is simply get everything to stay still. Ooh, that looks like a close flat kit. And that's looking reasonably good, actually. Oh, there you go, there's a 3D load. Got a building. There's that flag still popping off around us. So, uh, I hope we can get this done quicker. And there we go, the buildings are finally loaded. I'm going to adjust my aim a little bit down, because this is where the bombs are going to start hitting with a bit of luck. Oh, we've just taken a hit. The nose has been hit. You can see they're all shaken up a bit there, but we'll worry about that in a minute. Now let's watch for slipping. Drift looks pretty good, everything seems lined up there. Third cool, I don't see anything. Looks like we're all good. That should be a good run with a bit of luck. And then once these two come together, the bombs will release. Ah, okay, we have a fire on the flight deck. Now, the last time I've tried this, I've noticed if you hop out of the seat, the bomb doesn't drop. So I can't afford to leave this station, unfortunately, so hopefully the crew will uh, look after themselves in the meantime. We've got fighters coming, though, and you can see the flashes of the flak around us. Almost on the bomb now. I just wish we'd march up on the target quicker, come on. That's a lot of fighters. I always hate making last second adjustments, but unfortunately something's happened and we started wobbling. So uh, here's hoping we get a good run, but the amount of drift has me worried. You can see we suddenly started tipping. So I'm worried we might have taken some damage, right to evade a bit there. And here it comes. And release any second now. There they go. Oh, look at our aircraft wobbling. You can see the ground shifting beneath us. This is going to be a bit of a snake, I think. There go the bombs. Oh, yes, we took a, a lot of peppering during that bomb run. And there goes a fighter. Got the crew all right inside. And we had a report of a fire, didn't we? So let's just check if that's been sorted out or not. See the guns firing. Repair. No, we have fixed that ourselves already. Now, can I get a view of the target area? No, I can't. Now, we're almost over it. God, look at the state of our aircraft. It wouldn't let me take the camera downstairs, unfortunately. Oh, there we go, our bombs. Ah, uh, so, yeah, we slipped off, we've missed entirely. Looks like we hit some of the yard there, but we missed the main body. And oh, look at the state of our plane. So we got absolutely massive mark along there. We took a hell of a hit there. Alright, free high. And there he is. Didn't look like he's going the right way though. Unfortunately, the crew don't, don't distinguish between uh, aircraft coming in and coming out. So sometimes they call that an aircraft that's not a threat. Let's hop to the tail and have a look around. And uh, th oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong stuff at the moment. So that's a friendly aircraft coming back into formation. They probably got hit by a fighter. But what I was saying is the uh, elevators are missing in this 3D view. I don't know why they've always been like that, including the original. I guess they probably wanted to animate them at some point. And never did. Here he comes. You never get along with these snapshots. You think the tail gunner would be one of the best seats in the house. And for the view, it ooh, is. Yeah, that's that there, that's why I turn off the collisions for air, aircraft. Is that a fighter? Yes. Let's try and catch him. Uh, got him, there we go, black smoke. So he's got an oil leak, he will not be bothering us anymore. 
there's a guy down there, you see that B-17 on our left, they are leaking fuel from probably the number 3, 4 engine. There's a fighter or something down there coming up. And across. And there goes a P-38. So good to see we've got our escort. We've got an engine smoking. Or had. I'm not sure. We'll have to have a look at that. There goes another fighter. Now there is a hotkey to jump you to whatever seat is seeing the action. But it's often not good to get a bit disoriented to doing that, so I generally prefer to stay in. Another one? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I wish the guns could spin around faster. Where is he? Oh, I think that's a P-38, so that's not going to be a problem. Ooh, our uh, number four engine there, you see it's taken a bunch of holes. One's alright. Uh, we are getting a bit knackered. I think it's probably a good time to take stock of the aircraft, so I'm going to hop into the cockpit. And have a look at those instrument panels. Engines are performing alright for the moment. Uh, looks like engine 3 has a fuel leak, or they're burning fuel faster. So I need to keep an eye on that, we might have to give them more fuel later on in the fight. And let's jump into a turret again. Manual control. Field of view is very limited on this turret. Alright, there's a turn. Start making our way home. I think we scored a hit on him, maybe. And he's out to the side somewhere. They're just cutting through us. Got really unlucky with the flak there. Oh, I can see some fire. No, they're, they're outbound. Oh, that one, however. Uh, he gets too high. I'm trying to preempt when he's going to fly into my field of view. Oh, all these wounded bombers, so you can see there, he's drifting out of position. There goes a P-38 to our left. It's that guy there, he's probably taking a bit of damage. Oh, speaking of taking damage. Not got a good view on him, but there's an engine out down there. Oh, our formation is falling apart there. Uh, there's an aircraft beneath us. Let's see if we can't score something on him. Getting the lead rights. An acquired skill to say the least. I'm gonna hop over and see if I can find it. There we go, the ball turret. Can't see crap in this ball. And uh, let's take manual control, so somewhere out here. There was an aircraft with an engine out. Hoping he's still with us. There you go, that one's missing is number three. Ball level. Ball's not a great place to see that. And of course ourselves, we're just pippered all over. That guy's taken a massive hit there in his wing, you can see straight through it. There goes a fighter. There he goes. Don't think he's scored any hits, there's another one, he's got a fuel leak or something, trailing. Go on, get him guys. we look down there, you can see that engine is black and they've had a fire, they put it out, thankfully. Uh, there he is. You don't want to hit your own aircraft in the formation. That's a new group of fighters that's come in, they're fresh. Starting to get worried for some of our boys, because if they get too damaged, they'll fall behind and get chewed up by the fighters. Ooh, look, there you go, another wing torn straight through by the flak. Hold on, okay, we've got a crew member going down. Oh, okay. Yeah, the pilot's down. Thankfully, looks like we've already got someone in here. Oh, wait, what are you doing, buddy? Where are you going? Oh, you can see all the damage going down the back of his seat. So, someone in here... Don't know where he's going. He's transferring through. So, I've currently got the AI with a bit of initiative on them. I'm going to get this guy... to give some first aid... to the pilot. Unfortunately, having taken the injury, he's going to keep on going down for the rest of the flight, depending on how grave the injury is. He's just on firing, so I jumped in. 
and uh, manual control he can't aim at the target so it's just jittering. Don't see anything. Not a useful turret either. There we go. Oh, it's faster than the turrets though. Did we hit him just there? Ooh, wow, oh, and there we go. <laughs> that is a perfect example of why the AI, uh, why you turn off the air-to-air -air collisions. The AI is not good enough to avoid collisions themselves, and that is a problem with the original game. I hope the Redux will fix because I'd like to have to turn on air-to-air -air collisions because they did happen sometimes, but uh, not that frequently. Free aircraft flew through our formation. Free aircraft crashed. Unfortunately, that means the aircraft are all going to be thrown about. There's one down there. The one there. They're going to recover and catch up. Sounds like our pilot's been picked up. Yep, he's up and up and about again. So he, depending on how bad he's injured, will pass out again. We'll have to hope he's all right. I'm going to hop. Oh, there we go. At Ten level. Uh, are we going to get an overview? No, not a good shot there. There's a P-38 chasing him. Go get him. I'd love to be able to control them, actually, but uh, like I said before, that's been disabled. You can see them on the side, but no control. Now we're doing on the waist. No, nothing on this side. Uh, let's hop over to the tail. There. There's a bomber behind us there. Just clipped his wing tip, that won't do much. One of the ways you can figure out where the enemy are is looking at the turrets on the other aircraft. If they start shooting at something, point in that direction. Yeah, we're all getting a bit chewed up here. Right. How are we doing? We are better part of the way out now. I don't really agree with the uh, flight plan they've given us here. They're flying us back into a flak ring and out across another one. If I'm not mistaken, I can grab these and edit them. There we go, so we'll get around that flat bubble. Trouble is, when you get damaged bombers, they don't like turning in the formation wall. End up all over the place. We're already at this waypoint now, so I might as well let that happen. But it has put us into this flak ring for no reason, really. If we'd uh, been really aggressive, we could turn off the target and come round through here. The game likes to do quite wide formations to try and avoid the AI colliding with themselves in the turns, because especially when they get damaged, they can bump into each other all the time. In fact, even when they're not damaged, they'll sometimes do it. Looks like the fighters have cleared off, though. Oh, put the flak's back on. Now, I think we're going to make another, that's really heavy flak, so let's jump over to the radio room. We don't have a radio operator, where's he gone? I assume he's up front. Alright, you need to get off your gun and move to the radio room, please. Because it is busy out there. This is one of those times where I wish the initiative had been turned off and they'd uh, only do what I tell them to. Ready operator's made it to his seat just about, come on, in you go. Sadly you need the operator in order to make any commands for the formation, so let's increase the altitude a thousand foot. Oh no. More more band, it's wonderful. Uh I don't see anything. Oh there's a flak again. It's heavy today. Good grief. So that's what you get when you go to a major area like Bremen. To say people did not like going there would be an understatement. Let's just hope we don't take any more hits. 
don't know what I'm seeing. I keep on mistaking these dots actually on the uh, on the turret there for aircraft in the distance. At the waypoint. Let's get back in and have a look at our fuel state. So that was not quite what I was expecting. Cockpit please, action station and instrument panel. Engines are in sync more or less. Oh, the RPM on 3 has dropped. And let's check the fuel gauge. They're the same. 3 is dropping. So we've got to make a choice there in the long run. Do we pull the fuel out of the engine? Or do we let it run till dry? If we pull the fuel out, then obviously we lose the engine immediately. Or we can put the fuel in and keep leasing fuel, which might lead to us running out of fuel in the long run. Oh, this is getting a bit scary. Where are you going, buddy? In fact, we're not at the front of the formation anymore. We're supposed to be the leaders. So it looks like we might be down on power a bit. Now, you can actually directly fly the aircraft as well if you want, and so that becomes necessary when the AI starts uh, struggling to fly your aircraft, it gets too damaged. Are we falling out of formation here? Or is it just because we're in a bit of a mess? This is it again. This is why you don't do the tight turns. Because our formation is haphazardly everywhere. Looks like we're putting forward again, so we're probably alright, but we've got to put the, push the engines a bit harder to get back to the front. We're a little close. Can't imagine what it was like for... Uh, for real, trying to navigate this swarm of aircraft. And I think things have settled down, we're back in position. There's an aircraft right behind us, and it was a real crew effort with everyone pointing out where the aircraft are for the pilot, because obviously you can't see a lot from the front. Oh dear, oh, it's the uh, co pilot this time, so both are injured. I'm going to grab one of the waste gunners, send him up to the front, and he'll climb through all the aircraft to get there. And I think this is one of the really just kind of cool things. This was very much human element. You had to worry about your crew. And I don't really see it simulated in games anymore. I mean, you've got bomber crew, but that's a <laughs> very arcade. As he climbs through uh, through the bomb bay. And then finally makes it into the cockpit to give our co-pilot a, uh, a once-over and hopefully he'll feel better. And thankfully, it looks like the worst is behind us at last. Making our way out to Germany, you can see in the, uh, the ragged state of our group here. Got him with an engine out, that needs to be feathered ideally. And then there's a burnt out engine down there, and everybody's just peppered with little holes. You can see straight through the tail in many cases. And of course, we haven't fared too well either with all the damage we've taken. We are absolutely pocket marked. More injuries as we go. This time it's our top turret gunner, the engineer, who's being uh, helped off screen down this corner, I guess. Living past 10, we are now clearing the German coast, so we should be home free with a bit of luck. And we need to take a check of the fuel state, so instruments please. And let's have a look. Fuel quantity. And our navigator is lost, well done. Yes, so engine 3 is continuing to leak. It's not a fast leak, so I'm prepared to just eat the cost of the fuel. We carry more fuel than we need. So how much fuel should we have? About 140. Sorry, 240. And we're all the way down to... almost 100. So we have lost a fair bit of fuel in that engine. It'll probably be out by the time we land, but I'm prepared to keep the engine running just to keep the speed up as we fly home. So, as we leave the German coast behind us, we're going to head on home, and with a bit of luck, make it home in roughly one piece. Here we go then. Home sweet home. It's the coast of England just beneath us. No bombers lost. At least I don't think there were any lost. Certainly nobody since the uh, combat ended. Our engine number three is still going. You can see, in fact, visually that the RPM has dropped. As she's trucking on, still got fuel, gonna make her way home and land. And there we go, and we are now dropping out of formation. And we're gonna make our way 
down to land. Looks pretty clear. Say goodbye to the protection of the formation as we go on down. So you can see we're pouring out black smoke because our engines are getting too hot. As we've come down in altitude. Now, remember I mentioned there was a keybind that was blocked. We need this to adjust the uh, intercoolers. Now, I want that down to the cold position, I think it was. And that should help cool down the engines better. I also need, if I can find it, the air filters, which is this one. And, uh, I, is that on? I can't remember. If I can look at the... here we go. Filters are on, so that should be good. There we go. And the engines have stopped smoking. So it does feature some advanced engine simulation type stuff. But unfortunately what bothers me a little bit is the AI tend not to do it for whatever reason. They're not too smart quite often. As you can see the AI flights over here, they've all got their engines smoking. So uh, not great for the health of the engine. Now this game is honestly a reasonable simulation of the P-17. It's not most accurate, nor is it the most detailed in some respects. So the game is really, at its heart, a clickable cockpit. You can adjust many of the systems and run all the switches here. Of course, uh, it's held back by the time, which is all these different menus you've got to go through to interact with the different systems, and it's, it's a bit of a pain. It is very much a child of the 90s. But it does have all that simulation depth. It's just obscured by user interface. We've got the airfield off to our left now, we'll be landing in a moment with our luck, and hopefully our landing gear will work just fine. I'm slightly worried about the uh, engine here, but we'll see in a minute. Flaps are down, gear is coming down too, I'm surprised by that one. I was really expecting the engine number three there on the right it was going to hitch on us and we have to manually crank it down, looks like we're in luck. Now this flight, I've just let the AI fly the aircraft, you can take manual control and in many cases you'll have to, especially if the aircraft gets really badly damaged. But it looks like we got away fairly well on the uh, controllability front today. So there we go, we're coming into land. Now I've been considering quite strongly actually doing a let's play of this, as I honestly do love the game despite its flaws and its age, because it's something that's, it simulates something you don't really see any, anymore and it does big bombers pretty well. And touchdown, there we go. So what do you guys reckon to a uh, name in the game series? We'll put uh, Patreon and YouTube members into the crew. Ooh, there, you can see the wheel wobbling there, so we did take some damage to that bay. Looks like the aircraft's down in one piece, though. We've sagged a bit on one side. But yeah, we'll probably do a series on this with some named characters for the crew, which I think would be quite fun to do. And it's a bit of a break from the, uh, the stresses and complexity of DCS. Now, the game itself is still a little bit flawed, it's not perfect by any means, especially the Redux, there's a whole bunch of problems with it, it's control settings and annoyances and things that were, you know, things you'd expect to see in the Redux that aren't there yet. This is unfortunately very much early access, like I said, I love to control the aircraft, the uh, escort, and even the enemy aircraft, and of course, there's all the bugs of the original still, so the AI is terrible. <laughs> It's, uh, it needs some work, especially to avoid collisions. But, I don't know, it's, it's probably a bit steep for the price at the moment, but if you love the game, and you're prepared for the obtuse and awkward interfaces that you find in the 90s, it is a really good game overall. It's just, I expect a bit better. Our engine started smoking there without the airflow to call it. So in fact, uh, we might turn that one off. So, uh, let's find engine... No, it's only on off, it's not both. So there we go, that's engine 3 off, that'll save its life from damage, because although we're not in a campaign sitting here, this was just a mission, one-off historical mission. You do have to worry about the wear and tear on your aircraft and the damage it takes, and that'll determine, especially in the squadron commander mode, how many aircraft can go up in the future. So we've made it home safe and sound in one piece, Three and a half engines, wonky wheel and uh, a torn up frame, and a spattering of injuries. So let's go over to the parking and take a look at the human toll and how we did on the bombing. So back in the briefing room, let's have a look then. So uh, distance flown, managed to shave off about 40 
maybe 100 miles off our list. We lost a bomber, but we did shoot down five fighters, and unfortunately we missed the factory entirely. It's, uh, I'm not sure what happened. I think the flak threw us off at the end there. So, uh, we missed our target, sadly, and that's the way of it. You go all that way, take all the risk, and you might not even drop your bombs sometimes. So a whole bunch of fatal wounds. They are probably the crew that were shot down, and you can see here at the end we got medium, flesh, severe, fatal, and fatal again. And there's our bomb. So we did do some damage, but we weren't on target, sadly. And you can see that snaking S from the aircraft wobbling after it got hit by the flak. So medals awarded, purple hearts all around. An awful lot of them. This missing crew is accounted for was a Guardian Angel, which had crashed in enemy territory with the whole crew killed, unfortunately. So there we have it. That is the historical mission to Bremen. One bomber down's pretty good going, all things said, for Bremen. So I think next time we'll probably be seeing a mission running the campaign as a career in our own aircraft. And I'm trying to figure out what we might call the bomber and of course who are going to be crewing the bomber itself and what names they'll have. So for now I hope you enjoyed and take care.